going on guys? It's your boy, The Big Rob Theory. I'm going to be presenting for you one of the first of many Arrowverse reviews, The Flash, season six premiere. Finally guys, we're here, the main essence of my channel, which is the Arrowverse. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love DC and DC related content. Not only that, one of my favorite DC heroes is The Flash. I just think that DC is very underrated and it's understandable considering, you know, the movies they've come out with that have been gaga. Green Lantern, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> but anyway, over the course of the next few weeks, there's going to be a brand new episodes of various Arrowverse shows that are coming out. I will be keeping up to date with them and reviewing them for you and giving your reaction videos while also going back and reviewing the other Arrowverse seasons of the various TV shows. It's a lot of content, I know. Get ready. So this first episode starts off and immediately uh, there's a conflict and I'm like, wait, what? What? They're bringing that guy in that early? As you watch the episode, you'll realize it's, they do this, you know what I mean? They, they kind of, they throw something at you. Every Flash season, they throw something at you and you're just kind of like, oh, okay, 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 relax, relax. For those of you who are up to date or at least know um, the show and have watched it a couple times, you know, Barry Allen is played by Grant Gustin. Iris West, or now as Iris West Allen, is played by Candace Patton. Caitlin Snow, AKA Killer Frost, is played by my girl, Danielle Panabaker. Met her a couple months ago. Amazing, uh, what a great experience. Carlos Valdez, my man, he plays Cisco Aramon. Cisco is the man, okay? The man. A newer addition to the uh, Flash Squad is Hartley Sawyer, AKA Ralph Dibney, or Elongated Man. He comes in around uh, season four, and uh, well, once I go back and review uh, we'll talk more about him. He's he's awesome. So overall, uh, this this episode was a great first episode. You know, there were there were some slow times, but also some very action packed times. This season, season six, we get a newer uh, main character. His name is Senhil Rama Murray, or uh, as some most of you may know him uh, from Heroes. I love that guy. He's a great actor. He's been in Psych as well, and he's just a great actor. Any role he plays, he just dives into it, and the way how he speaks and the inflection in, in, in certain words that he uses is just, it's just great. So Jesse L. Martin, aka Joe West, is a detective at the Central City Police Department. Danielle Nicolette, she plays Cecile Horton. She is also a DEA agent at the Central City Police Department, and they meet each other there, they help each other out with a couple things. Things happen, you know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give too much away right now because I'm kind of going out of order. I really didn't want to, but I was just so excited about the newest seasons of these shows that I, I had to get these out, so forgive me. If you already watch uh, these shows, especially The Flash, you'll know that uh, some of the villains that they bring in in the beginning are not necessarily the main villains of the season, which I really do love about these shows. They kind of get you in the mode of, oh man, this this villain right here, this guy, he, whoo, he is really gonna lead the charge this season and Team Flash is gonna have their hands full. It comes to that mid-season finale and you're like, wait, 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 huh? Ooh, ow, but. I love the way that these Arrowverse shows do that because not only does it create for new plot elements and just different things to happen with different timelines, it also creates this like false sense of, oh, okay, we already know who the villain is, so we've seen him, let's, let's see his backstory. This is great writing, you know, and a lot of people, they dog on the CW shows because they think it's too cheesy or there's too much lovey-dovey stuff in it. Newsflash. It's a TV show, people. God, why are we getting all bundled up in the panties for? Like, what, the, what is this? DC is one of the darkest uh, versions of comics. Therefore, they have to put some lighthearted things in there for television purposes. Like, it's just, it's kind of like an unwritten rule kind of thing. That's at least what I personally think. One of my other friends, he, he, can't, he will agree. You gotta add some cheese balls into this, man. Like, come on. I love these shows so much. And the, ever since Flash season one, they've been building up to something called a crisis. Now, as it's been publicized, it's called Crisis on Infinite Earths. Now, there's various versions of this in the comics. The versions of these in the comics are all uh, intertwined. There's different, uh, there's different versions that happen. There's crisis, and then there's another crisis. So the way how this crisis uh, crossover is leading up and how it looks like it's going to be, and it looks like this is going to be one of the biggest on-screen crossovers and most character-filled crossovers 
that I've ever seen and that we've ever seen in, in media. This is going to be an insane crossover. So again, from Flash season one, they have been teasing at this, this crisis that Flash goes missing during. Over the seasons, the time has kind of either sped up or slowed down or things have happened. And now, for reasons that I will not get into that you will just have to go and watch, the timeline has sped up. So now instead of Flash vanishing, I don't know, maybe 10 years from now, it's more like uh, 10 months from now or, you know, four months from now, who knows? That's another thing about these shows. Uh, not just Flash, uh, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, Black Lightning, and now apparently Titans. There's so much lore to dive into with these shows and now we have a brand new show called Batwoman with my girl Ruby Rose and she is incorporated into this too. There is a plethora, a plethora of superhero lore to dive into with these shows. All you gotta do is give it a shot, man. Give it a shot. I'm sorry, I, I deviated heavily. Let's get back to The Flash. So in this episode, there's not a lot going on, as I said before. Just kind of like touching base from last season. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I'm not gonna be doing any spoilers in regards to any movie reviews I do, really, let alone the Arrowverse. I just can't do it, man. Like, I, I, can't, I can't sit here and knowingly say things that when I first saw them with no prior knowledge, my jaw dropped, you know? Like, it sounds silly, but it's the truth. I don't want to ruin anything for you. Spoiler reviews are great. Non-spoiler reviews are even better. These shows don't merit any kind of spoilers because one, if you're up to date on social media, you'll see a lot of the stuff that, you know, everybody's talking about it. Unfortunately, there's no way to truly hide from uh, getting anything spoiled unless you literally do not dive into social media. Season six, episode two comes on tonight, and I'll be doing a review slash reaction for it, obviously, after the uh, episode, yeah. I know that this was like a short video, very wonky, all over the place, you know, you could just like feel my excitement and hear it. I uh, am excited about these shows. Thank you guys again for watching this video. Please like and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the latest Flash episode. I know I didn't dive too much into it because I don't really want to spoil anything or I don't even want to get close to even going off on a tangent about anything. This was just the first episode, so there's not gonna be much for me to say, especially because not, not too much happened. So just know it was a great episode. I will dive deeper into what goes on and everything without spoiling anything from uh, episode two and on. So don't worry, not every video is gonna be like this. Thanks guys. And away we go, baby.